We've talked a lot, Hoda and I, about what transformation means. It's about really thinking about things holistically, your health, your happiness, your well-being. You just keep pushing through your days, your weeks, your months. So we decided let's right the ship and not make a change, but make a transformation. So how do you do it? You do it physically and you do it spiritually and emotionally. So this month, Hoda and I have decided to challenge our bodies and our minds to feel better in 2024. We're kicking things off with something I'm interested in, gut health and learning how specific foods can affect our bodies. I've had three children in the last, you know, 10 years. And I think for the, those 10 years, my priority really was their health, their nutrition. Sometimes I would eat just string cheese standing up at the table while they sat down for dinner. And they say your gut health is your overall health. So if you can figure that piece out, maybe all of a sudden, your life snaps into focus. Hoda and I both eat pretty healthy and we feel like there's room to really think about mindful eating, what we're putting into our body. According to gastroenterologist, Dr. Roshini Raj, improving your gut health and digestion can improve sleep, your mood and heart health. If your gut health is thrown off for some reason, that can not only make you feel kind of lousy in terms of your digestion, so having a well-balanced gut actually helps you with your metabolism and with weight gain as well. And we know that if you're feeding your gut the right things, those are also healthy foods for your entire body. I'm afraid that even things that are healthy yeah. may be sitting wrong with me. Um, so I'm hoping to get my gut health in check in 2024. Absolutely. So we enlisted some help from Kate Kresge from Rupa Health, a centralized platform for healthcare practitioners to order various lab work. She facilitated blood tests that would tell us more about our possible food allergies and sensitivities. Those are two different parts of your immune system that can react to food and just make you feel poorly, even if you're making all the right food totally. choices. Yeah. Symptoms of food allergy can include immune reactions such as hives, itchy throat, and in severe cases, an anaphylactic reaction, while food sensitivities can cause pain, nausea, or stomach discomfort. Yes. That was it? Okay, great, thank you. Here's my thing with food. I don't know what it is, but every now and then, I'll be going along my merry way, and I'm like, I feel terrible, I feel sluggish. If part of the food reaction you're experiencing is immune-based, so your body just isn't tolerating a food yeah. very well, or you're allergic to it or sensitive to it, we'll pick it up with this blood test. How are you with needles? Fine, fine enough. And just like that, you're on your way to finding out the answer. The goal of food sensitivity testing is not to tell you, hey, you can never eat this food right. again. It's to say, what foods is your immune system too reactive to? Let's calm it down, let's try again, and let's see if we can have your body make peace with that food again. So Hoda and I are ready to put in the time, energy, and effort to transform in 2024. Okay, we're ready. With us now is Will Cole, a functional medicine expert and author of Gut Feelings, healing the shame-fueled relationship between what you eat and how you feel. This is so important. I guess I haven't really given gut health a no. lot of thought, but this was something that was top of your list, Jenna. It's top of my list, yeah. but I don't even really know what it means. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of one of those words that people throw around. What yeah. exactly is gut health? Yeah, it's nebulous, right? Because what, what the heck are we talking about? Yeah. It's, it's more than digestive health. It is digestive health. Yeah. But as you said in the clip, it, gut health, what happens in the gut doesn't just stay in the gut. Yeah. It's home to 75% of our immune system. Inflammation is a product of the immune system. So a lot of inflammation issues have gut-centric components. And also 95% of serotonin, our happy neurotransmitter, is made in the gut. Our gut's known as the second brain. So hormone, mood, energy, inflammation, and digestion all has to do with gut health. Well, it's funny because we eat pretty good diets, but we had no clue of what was harming our gut, what was helping our gut, what we were sensitive to. And so we got um, our results. And I think we should start with Jenna's. Okay. Uh, you didn't administer these tests, yeah, but, but you did you review analyzed them. them. Yes, so let's, we did. Talk, let's talk about Jenna's results. Okay, so Jenna had some had some allergies. She had a moderate allergy to soy. Yes. And that's an IgE response or a more immediate immune system response. And then she had a, several IgG responses. Yeah. So yeah. you got apples, green peppers, lobster, and scallops. I know. And things I love to and eat. And soybean yeah. and tuna and turkey. Yeah. And that's what I hear oftentimes turkey, yeah. from people. That was Could moderate. turkey be because I eat all the time a turkey yes. almost every day? It's not... 
when I see a lot of these foods, it, typically that's what someone says. I eat this a lot. Yeah. It's not so much that these foods, there's nothing inherently wrong with these foods. These are all healthy whole foods. But it's the immune system's overreaction to these foods. reacting to the foods. So it's, and remember, all labs are snapshots in time. Right. So you want to always pair labs like this with an elimination diet to see what your body loves. So get rid of some of those things for a couple of weeks, try yes. to work on the overall gut health, and then see. So exactly. you'll lose what lobster and all those yeah, tuna, scallops, tuna. scallops, all um, those things. Okay, seafood. let's. Can we see Hoda's list? Sure. And let's this talk is about heartbreaking. This. Is this heart mine? Is heartbreaking. I'm. I, I eat eggs. Eggs and apples are but kind of. You're moderate in a lot of things. What's candida? What is that? Well, candida is not a food. I don't think you're okay. like serving up a bowl of candida. I don't but know what is it? It's, it's, a, spice? A, it's a yeast fungus, yeast. actually. So mm -hmm. normally. But I'm glad you're allergic. And that's what just. Yeah. So the reality is when you have a candida immune response, that's typically a sign of some yeast and fungal overgrowth in the gut. I would do further tests to confirm that. Fungal. <laughs> okay. So what should we all be doing yeah. to improve our gut health? I mean, we can talk about us specifically, but yeah. really all of us are in the same thing. Right. You have some advice. It's, yeah, it's a massive issue because, again, the gut is so influential. Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, said all health problems begin in the gut. Yeah. And yeah. now research is catching up with antiquity, mm -hmm. that the majority of health problems we face as a society begin in the gut, okay. at least in part. So give us some practical things we can all do, foods we can eat, things we can change. So number one, I would focus on soups and stews because digestion requires a lot of energy right so breaking that food down almost like pre-digesting it in a super stew a hearty super stew you're getting your calories that way allows the gut the sort of proverbial siesta for your gut to yeah. repair could you, you just chew food a whole bunch of times. You could, but having <laughs> that's what someone told me. They said chew it till it's almost the light. I think they said that because and you and I eat so fast. Maybe that's part of you our problem. You also love bone broth. You'd like to start your day that way. Yeah. So ha focusing on bone broth or plant-based broths as well, like galangal ginger, seaweed broth. But again, having that as the base. But these carb-rich vegetables protein makes it easier to digest beans oats. beans oats and by the way i think a lot of us who were raised in the you know 80s and 90s think carbs equal bad and mm -hmm. you're saying that is not yeah. true no not all carbs are equal right they're not all metabolized the same way so don't fear fruits don't fear starchy mm -hmm. vegetables like sweet potatoes yeah. and even these carbs beans, when they're oats, what about lentils what about a probiotic because a lot of people say if you get the right probiotic it'll yeah. right your gut exactly i would start with probiotic rich foods like kombucha, kefir, yogurts, sauerkraut, kimchi. But yeah, probiotics, I recommend spore-based probiotics typically spore -based? to patients. They're from soil, yeah. right? Humans throughout history would have been outside more in nature. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's sort of what the researchers call an ancestral mismatch, an evolutionary mismatch. We need to, we can take it and supplement should, for Should them. you take a probiotic on a completely empty stomach? Yes, typically that's what's that's recommended. That's the first thing Because I think you forget. You're like, yeah, so do it on an empty and then start so your day. So spore-based probiotics okay. and or get it from natural yeah. food. Yeah, from okay. foods. Cool. Okay, oh my gosh, thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you so Will. much. We need more time. Thanks, Will. All right, <laughs> next week, it's my Transform in 2024 challenge. I've got a mindful journey in cold therapy. Okay. We're working on breath work. Yes, and we. And we, we also want to see how your transformation is going. So tag along with us. Come on our wellness journey. We'll give you some things that you can do along with us. Hoda and Jenna, 2024.